Hi everyone, welcome to Traveling Misnets. My name is Pia and I am so happy that you're joining me here today. I have some knitting to share. I have some thoughts on my fall knitting plans. And I also have a giveaway winner to announce. Actually, as I was getting ready to record, I was thinking like everything I have to share today seems to be part of a bundle. And what I'm wearing also is kind of part of a bundle. I am wearing my CDCO 23, my Christmas Day cast on from last year. And I've made this four times. So it's kind of a bundle um, over the summer, this version and the other short sleeved version that I worked in Itoshimo has been my go-to on slightly colder days. And this is one of those days. It's not summer anymore by any means, but it's still warm and a short sleeved woolen t-shirt is just perfect for weather like today. This one I worked in uh, hot, super soft, just one strand. So it's quite an open gauge, uh, but this, this yarn just fluffs up so beautifully when you block it. So it's, yeah, the perfect knit. I'm not going to talk a lot about the CDCO 23 because I've talked about it so, so many times. It is just a very well-fitting t-shirt. On this one, I have a, uh, a, a tall funnel neck, but often I will uh, just fold it in. If it's not really cold, then I actually prefer it folded in like this, but I'm not gonna sew it down because sometimes it's nice to have something that comes up just a little further. But yeah, the things that I have finished, the things that I am working on. So the first thing I finished, and it's not completely finished, but it's finished enough. This is John's sweater that I finished a while back. And then I decided to go ahead and make a matching sweater for his younger brother, Lucas, uh, and then put a car instead of Mickey Mouse, because Lucas loves cars. In the beginning, I was like, I'm gonna add Lightning McQueen from the movie that Lucas loves so much, but that was way too difficult. He's so detailed. So I just came up with a car with a big smile, open mouth so you can see his tongue, as John said. And I really think that these two are so cute together. Of course, Lucas is still needs the eye cords here. And it, I also think that I'm gonna do like I did with John's and add an elastic band here uh, at the end of the neckline before you go into the yoke, just to help it stay in place. But yeah, aren't they gonna be so cute in their little sweaters? They're both worked in drops, merino, extra fine. I have talked about it at length in previous episodes, but I wanted to show you this as it was almost done. I hope, I hope to be able to show them on the little ones. Next week, we're gonna be going to Texas. I'm gonna give them their sweaters and Hopefully I can snap some beautiful photos of the little ones in their brand new sweaters. I, I have mentioned this before. I followed the pattern for my family sweater, which is just a very simple raglan. There's um, nothing special to, to that. It's just a raglan sweater top down that I know fits well. So I used that pattern and then I substituted the neckline um, for the neckline that is going to be in my cat number six pattern, which is going to come out at the beginning of November prior to the knit-a-thon number six. We're going to uh, talk much more about that, but yeah, 
These are the sweaters. I am very exciting to, excited to be giving those away. The thing that I have been working on after I finished Lucas's sweater is mainly my Shannon's rug. It's not a lot of work that I put into it. Also, this rose pattern, it does take quite a while. It's, it's slow going um, because that's just the nature of this rose stitch is that on every other round, you actually knit in the stitch below, uh, which means that the, the row count is quite high in the gauge here. So you, there's a lot of knitting, but I am enjoying it and I have knit so much in this rose pattern now that I can more or less knit it without looking, which is perfect because I've been binge watching television many of the nights in this week. Uh, I've been watching The Rings of Power. I don't know that I love it. And then I've been watching The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives, which I shouldn't have been. But that's my guilty pleasure is sleazy mockumentaries. Yeah. So if you, if you have as bad taste in television as I do, you're going to love that show. Anyway, my Sienna's rug that I uh, showed you on the last episode, uh, a pattern that I just released. This version works in blue. I mean, wow, I don't wear blue, but I think, I think I'm going to wear this. I really feel like playing with colors on these rugs, and this is definitely not the last one that I'm going to be making. I enjoy making them and I enjoy wearing them. The two that I already finished, I use them all the time. So uh, of course there's going to be more. It's a, a fun little project and there is something very satisfying about knitting this rose stitch. Um, it's beautiful and I love the texture, the, the waffly texture of it. Just gives me fall vibes. It just, it feels very cozy to be knitting on it. It feels like I'm creating something for fall. So I'm very, very happy to be knitting away on this one. So the third thing that I'm going to show you is actually where a whole lot of my knitting time has gone lately. It is the cat number six. And you have already seen the first version that I made last summer when I originally created this pattern. Peter's perfect sweater, I called it. It is perfect for him, especially now that I re -knit the body to make it a little longer and a little slimmer, just because the yarn had it, it turned out to be the kind of yarn that uh, pulls up and then becomes wider in use, where I was, I was pretty sure that it would be one of the yarns that would grow lengthwise, especially in a huge garment like this one, but no. But now that I ring it the body, it fits him perfectly. There are more short rows in his version that, than there is in the pattern because he needs a lot of short rows. So in the pattern there are not as many short rows, but there are still some because that's what we like. We like our, I like my sweaters, Peter likes his sweaters to be even when he's wearing them. He wants the front and the back to be even and to achieve that you actually need just a few short rows on most body shapes. So the cat number six is going to be one pattern, but there's going to be some options in there. There's going to be the option for a male size with male length arms uh, and a longer body 
that has just a little bit of shaping, a few short rows and a little bit of increases just to go from the shoulders, which are typically wider on men and down to the hips. That can of course be omitted if you're knitting for someone who has a different body type. But there's also gonna be another version in there, a body shape that is shorter and a little more playful, more short rows, uh, more increases, and the increases are placed on the front. So the front sort of pulls up. Um, it gives a really playful and cute look to a sweater, I think. Um, but yeah, women's sizes, women's size uh, sleeves. Both of them, uh, both the long sleeves intended for men and the shorter sleeves intended for women have, um, and I don't know that you can tell, but they both have some short rows here uh, just before the cuff, just because your arm is longer going here than in here. So by working those short rows here, your sleeve is actually going to fall nicer also in wear. Maybe if you knit a sleeve straight, it'll be nice in the beginning, but then over time it might stretch a bit here. So to alleviate some of the stress uh, at the elbow area, I am adding short rows just before the wrist, just to accommodate for the fact that our arms are longer on the outside. For the sizes in the pattern, I don't go like uh, these chest circumferences are for men and these are for women because there are men that are way smaller than me and women that are larger than me. And it, it doesn't really mat matter if you're a man or a woman, you just pick the, the chest circumference that is right for you with the ease that you want. And then you do the, 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 the modifications or the, the, the way that you accommodate for either a man or a woman is by the length of the sleeve. And also, I think for most, uh, the shaping of the body. I think this shaping of the body with the shorter body and, and the uh, increases pulling the front up and in front, I think that will read kind of feminine to most, but hey, I don't know. Uh, for sure, this is a more classic body, just with a few increases and a few short rows. Another option that I am also putting in the pattern is the hooded version. Um, so here you have a, a version with a hood. So you have to choose between the two necklines, either the, the faux, faux hoodie neckline or the actual hooded version. And then you pick sleeve length, body shape, body length uh, to, to accommodate for your wishes. But yeah, I am in love with the hooded version. This is this is really a um, yeah, it's because of my yarn choice. It's not a sweatshirt. I am definitely gonna knit one that's gonna be like a sweatshirt. This is more like outerwear for me because I knit it in a fingering weight yarn, but one that is. Uh, it has some, some floof. It's a, a thick fingering weight, uh, mainly because of uh, the floof. So I knitted double stranded and I had to, uh, to knit much more tightly than I usually will. So the fabric is it's it's massive. It's a massive sweater. This one actually together with a uh, a puff vest would get me through winter easily. Um, yeah. 
This yarn that I used for the hooded version is from Garn Specialisten, the company in Denmark that I have worked with before, the company that rescues yarn from the fashion industry uh, and sells it at really good prices. I mean, this one, 30 euro, 32, 3 dollars, something like that for the big hooded version. That's okay for a sweater. This yarn is, uh, it's a mix and I need to check here. It is 21% mohair, 21% alpaca, 18% merino and 40% nylon. So what this mix does it's, is it creates a very rustic yarn with a lot of floof and a lot of warmth. And I think it will probably last forever. 40% nylon is quite a lot. It's going to make it a very sturdy yarn. So I think I will have my sweater here forever and ever and I can pass it down in generations. It is very rustic. It does have mohair. It does have alpaca. Those fibers can tend to be like a little itchy to some. Um, I can use this uh, I, I wouldn't use this next to skin. I would always wear at least a t-shirt under because it's so heavy. But if I knitted single-stranded, I would be able to wear it next to skin. But then again, I'm also wearing the whole super soft next to skin. I'm not that sensitive. My sensitive area is my forehead. I even think I could make a hat from this but maybe I would regret doing that when I started getting warm. It is the kind of yarn that is, it is, it would definitely be scratchy to some, but I loved working with it. I love the fabric that it created. And you know what? I kind of also love that you can knit a beautiful sweater for 30 euro. I mean, that's, I like that. I like the luxury yarns, but I definitely also appreciate the budget-friendly yarns because I knit a lot. I could knit myself out of my house if I didn't sometimes go for the budget-friendly option. Peter's version is definitely knit in a luxury yarn. This is 50% yak, 50% silk. So it is buttery soft. It has a beautiful sheen. Bear in mind that this is a sweater that has been worn mm, roughly. <laughs> and, and Peter is not very careful with his clothes. He wears them for anything. Uh, he's been wearing this for more than a year. It has really taken some beating. Sometimes I've been like, no, I put so much work into that. But just look at this. I haven't even deep held it. And it's just, it's beautiful. That's amazing. So while this is not budget friendly, it is definitely a yarn that will give you some some quality uh, and and it is a yarn that clearly clearly passes the test of time so uh, this yarn is from the danish hand dyer and this as well i am going to link the yarns in the description box below because i kind of find it funny that they are so different the three yarns that i have used for the three different versions and now i'm just gonna pull up the yarn that i used for this one because mm, i love this yarn this is uh wool untreated wool from wales um and it is this malt strand uh of not quite black they also have a black and white but i chose the one that's mole and white 
it is just everything that a rustic yarn should be. It's, mm, it has this feeling of wool. It still has the smell of wool. I haven't blocked it yet. I only just, I steamed it a little bit, but I didn't give it a full blocking. So I can still mm, smell the sheepiness of it. It carries itself beautifully. I love this yarn. Uh, I added some uh, drops merino extra fine uh, for the neckline and for the bind offs. Just yeah, because I thought I think I think my reasoning was that this is um, this is kind of a busy yarn, even though it's only two colors. It's still kind of busy, so I wanted something to like frame the the whole thing so i went for just a black merino to do that but yeah this yarn is also from garn specialisten and we're still not talking expensive because uh you buy it in a cone um where you get enough for this for a sienna rug probably for one shrug more, maybe even one sweater more. There is so much yarn on that cone. Um, let's see, oh, you get a full kilo on the cone. And the cone is 600 kroner. That is, that's less than $100 for one kilo of natural untreated wool in this gorgeous colorway so yeah gotta love this i i am completely smitten with this yarn i'm definitely gonna use up everything on that cone because it's just so pretty but yeah these three i have been knitting so much i thought that peter's was in the bag because i mean I made the sweater last year, I had it tech edited, I had it tested, and I thought, okay, pattern ready to go, all is good. I just need to knit up uh, some of the other sizes and the other versions, the hoods and stuff, so I had my samples. And then Peter was like, mine is too short and too wide, so two and a half sweaters I had to knit up for this pattern. But I am so excited to be sharing it with you come knit-a-thon time. What I am doing when I want to use this neckline uh, on uh, a, a child sweater, because I'm not gonna be making the pattern in child sizes. Um, but what I do when I want to to use this neckline on another sweater is that I um, I just go with the number of stitches that you're supposed to cast on for the ribbing. I cast on twice as many stitches because this is double knit. Uh, then I cast on a few stitches to get this overlay that, that you have in the middle. And yeah, I, I then just follow the instructions uh, for the adult with the short rows and the buttonholes and whatnot. Uh, but just take the, the stitch count from the, uh, the original sweater pattern that you're using. It is quite simple. And I love that my entire family is going to be able to wear these cat number six. On all of them, I have done the same thing. Uh, originally in Peter's, I knit a, an eye cord to go all the way around the double knit neckline. But I actually decided that you're never gonna, gonna tie the eye cord. You're never gonna tighten it up. It's only there as a design feature. It has no practical reason. And it looks better and it is simpler to wear and for children much more safe to wear. If you just knit a short eye cord and then uh, feed it through the buttonhole here and tag it down on the inside. So that's what I've been doing on every one of these models that I have made.
Now I've shown them. I guess I could start wearing them. But on the other hand, the reason why I'm showing them now is because we are, as I said, we're going to go to Texas next week and we're going to stay there until uh, the beginning of November. So I was like, if I want to show these sweaters before we publish the pattern, then it's now. And I did. I wanted to show them. Show and tell. Bring and, bring and brag, as they say on Fruity Knitting. That's probably what I've been doing, bragging, because I'm very happy with this pattern. But yeah, because we are traveling for such a long period of time this fall, I have had to think about what am I going to be knitting and crocheting on uh, for the fall, for, yeah, the, the period that we're away. Uh, and, you know, my mind always goes to sweaters. Oh, I want to make this. I want to make this tromboli. It's so pretty. Caitlin Hunter's new pattern. Um, I want to make some uh, perfect little cardigans. I have yarn for it. I need more perfect little cardigans in my wardrobe. I want to knit my small stars sweater again. There are so many sweaters that my mind automatically go to when I start thinking about knitting pants. But, and I shared this on my Danish podcast a couple of weeks ago, I was looking through my notes of things that I have knit this year. So this sweater, which is the last one that I finished, this is garment number 26 for this year. 26. That's ridiculous. Even though I wear all my knits, I love all my knits. I wear knits almost every day. At the height of summer, I may not, but other than that, every single day. But still, 26 is a lot. Some of those were gifts. There were some knits for the for the little ones in the family. But still, I don't need more sweaters. So what I would really like to do for the fall is try to focus on something that's not garments. I love making things for the home. I love my blanket making. I also love to do just dishcloths Having a dishcloth that I knitted, it makes me happy many times every day when I grab this dishcloth and it's pretty and I'm like, oh, pretty. It makes me happy, not in a monumental way, but just these little drops of happiness in my everyday life. I would like to add to that. So I would like to make dishcloths, uh, pot holders, maybe a kitchen towel. Uh, I would like to make blankets, a pillowcase or two. I would also like to gift knit. I have these five grandchildren who, they are all very happy to get sweaters from grandma. I feel blessed. Um, even my 11 year old preteen Isabella loves getting sweaters from me or tops it's, it's actually summer tops that's her favorite but she gets very happy when i make them for her and all of them loves if i make little stuffies little like cute toys they love that victor just asked me to make a crap for him because he's so scared of craps and he was like maybe if i had a crap to play with I don't know where he got that idea, but I'm definitely making a crap for him. Um, yeah, I also want to knit hats and mittens and cowls, things that I can give to all these very knit worthy family members that I have. My brother, his entire family, they're extremely knit worthy. Peter is extremely knit worthy. He really treasures the things that I make for him. 
So that's, that's where I will try to keep my focus. <laughs> the stone bowl is very pretty. Also, I have my eyes set on a pattern from Gan Studio. It's a very, very old pattern. I knit this back in the 90s in a white cotton and I wore the heck out of that sweater. So I would really like to make it in some of my hand dyed red yarns that I made this summer. Yeah, as I said, I wanna make a perfect little cardigan. Also, I am gonna be working on my advent sweater, which is gonna be a cardigan this year. Ooh, exciting. I know that I'm gonna need to make at least two versions. That's what I will typically do for a pattern. I feel more safe if I make two versions. Also, there's gonna be some options in that pattern as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be doing so good on the no garment knitting, but really the advent, the advent pattern doesn't count. Usually I never plan my knitting. Um, of course I plan my uh, pattern releases, but my for fun knitting, I never plan that. I just pick up what I feel like knitting on and I go to town. It is kind of strange because on many other areas of my life I like to be organized. I love my lists. My lists are they're so close to my heart. I rarely refer to them but I love making them. So Let's see what happens to this list, mental list at least, that I have made for fall. I'm only going to pack yarn for the advent pattern and then for the little things. But I can get yarn in Texas. Uh, I already have a knitting date at the McKinney Knittery and after Texas, I'm going to Rhinebeck. I can get yarn but I'm trying to pace myself. So um, keep your fingers crossed for me and let me know, is there something that you are just knitting way too much of? Um, is, is there something where you're like, this is crazy. I cannot possibly wear all this. And then you proceed to not only wear it, but also make more of it. Or are you more of a balanced person? If you are, let me know how you got to be that way, will you? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun to see where I end up. Another thing that has been really fun this week has been reading through all of your comments. Wow, did I get inspiration for what to knit. My goodness and some lovely questions and one of them I need to answer right away so that I don't forget it because a lovely viewer asked me what was my favorite book and I actually do have I have two favorite books that I keep coming back to I think the one that I love most as a book is probably Shadow of the Wind. Uh, I do not remember the author's name. He's Spanish. I'm going to put it in the description box below. It's a beautiful book. I'm sure most of you have already read it because it's old. It, it's And there's even some follow-up novels to that one. But yeah, The Shadow of the Wind. That just... It just stayed with me for such a long time and I keep rereading it, which is typically a sure sign that I loved it. The other one that I'm thinking of is a book that I always have to read if I'm going through something that's just a little tough. If, if I feel I need a little more in the self-care department, I will very often uh, reach for a book that it's not great literature 
but it's just my it's my safety blanket it's the time traveler's wife and again i'm blanking on the author but i am going to put it in the description box below because those are yeah those are probably my two favorite books one because it's a beautiful language and an intriguing story the other one because it's such a comfort read for me do you have comfort reads or do you only judge books by their qualities not by the the emotions that that they stir up in you i would love to know and also let's exchange good books I'm always on the lookout for something new because I do read quite a lot. I've always done that. It's it's as much a part of me as knitting is. As I was reading through all of these comments, I wished that I had an extra day, like Thursday and a half, just to have time to answer each and every one of them because wow you made my day thank you so much for all of your beautiful comments i asked the youtube random comment picker to choose one comment so that we have a winner for our giveaway and the prize was this beautiful autumnal project bag set from Knitwear by Maki. I am gonna link uh, Malene Knitwear by Maki in the description box so you can go and check out her Instagram profile if you're interested in these bags. I love her project bags. Probably these large, I was going to say small, but they're large sock bags or small, uh, small project bags. I really love this model. Uh, it just, yeah, this, they can hold so much more than you think. But yeah, I am going to link her profile uh, on Instagram because that is where she sells her bags and she does offer international shipping. But one of you won uh, this set of project bags and I'm going to put the comment up here on the screen. If you wrote this comment, please write an email to me Pia at 50fabulous.dk. The email is also in the description box. Write to me, let me know your shipping information and I will get the bags shipped out to you as soon as possible. Thank you all for participating in this giveaway. Wow, that it's been a thing that I've been doing every morning with my first cup of tea is checking new comments and I have been enjoying it so, so much. So thank you so much for participating. I wish I had a, a prize for each and every one for each of you. As I mentioned, we are on our way to Texas, but we really have enjoyed our time here in Denmark. I've had some time on my own and last week Peter arrived from Italy and yeah, it's just Denmark in September. It's perfect. Uh, in Denmark, we, we divide the year up in blocks of three months and we say that September, October and November is the fall season. And you couldn't ask for a more beautiful fall. It's still really nice and warm, but you have this, this subtle chill in the air. You have the changing leaves. You have the whole nature just ah, turning inwards, just like I do at fall. So yeah, it's been gorgeous and we have been enjoying it so, so much. We still have some days that we are going to spend with our family primarily um, before we head out on a big trip that is going to bring us first to Texas to our oldest son and his family, then up to Rhinebeck. 
down to Manhattan for a few days and then to Florida uh, where we're gonna uh, try to see some of the beautiful uh, national parks that are there. We want to of course go to Everglades, we're gonna see the Keys. Yeah, it's gonna be nice. When we've been to Florida it has typically been with a lot of children and that just uh, go into the, the theme parks. So this is going to be a completely different experience and I am really looking forward to it. If you plan on coming to Rhinebeck, let me know because I would love to meet up with anyone who is going to come. So let's see if we can figure something out. But yeah, I am gonna go start my uh, my laundry. I was almost starting the washing machine. I was like, no, that's gonna make a noise. So I'm a little behind on laundry. I should probably start washing now so that things have a chance to dry before we need to pack the suitcases again. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again next time I record, which will yeah, be from Texas. I don't know when, but at some point. Until we talk again, stay happy, stay safe, and keep knitting.